Our passion for the past is the curiosity for the things that are lost. Our spells and prayers are symptoms of the break in the development of our kind's progress. What does it mean to be human? Are we shepherds of the earth or a problematic virus? How connected are our thoughts to the cosmic entity that drives our chaos? The questions surrounding our existence are astounding because we are part of everything, yet we want to believe that we are everything, that it all revolves around us. This is short-sighted but also comprehensible because we simply use ignorance as an excuse in our not knowing. The megalithic question is not so much why were massive building stones needed, but how? How did they move and shape such stones? If the why is the torus field, as laid out in the Squatterman question, then how exactly were they doing this? What technologies have been lost in the timeline of humanity's cataclysmic struggles? Wait to hear this. The Great Recycler, the Earth. Imagine if something that once belonged to you ended up in a museum in 7,000 years time. This is exactly what is happening in the recovery of the past. The Shidjar Idol, the oldest wooden structure recovered from the past echoes of time and possibly showing plasmatic displays in a nine foot display of ancient art recovered in 1890 in the gold mines close to Siberia. With some features characteristic to the Easter Island Moai and even that of Gobekli Tepe. Scattered amongst the geometric patterns are eight human faces, each with slashes for eyes that appear not so benignly from the front and back panes. The topmost mouth, set in a head shaped like an inverted teardrop. It's wide open and slightly unnerving. And according to the Cultural Heritage Department in Germany, the face at the very top is not a passive one. Whether it screams or shouts or sings, it projects authority, possibly malevolent authority. It's not immediately a friend of yours, and much less an ancient friend of yours. In archaeology, portable prehistoric sculpture is called mobiliary art. With the miraculous exception of the Shiger idol, no Stone Age wood carvings survive. The statue's age was a matter of conjecture until 1997 when it was carbon dated by Russian scientists to about 9,500 years old, an age that struck most scholars as fanciful at the time. Skeptics argued that the statue's complex iconography was beyond the reach of the apparent cave dwellers of the time. Unlike contemporaneous works from Europe and Asia featuring straightforward depictions of animals in hunt scenes, the Shiger idol is decorated with symbols and abstractions showing visual representations still ritualised by tribal authorities across the world. In 2014, a team-handed group of German and Russian scientists tested samples from the idol's core, uncontaminated by the previous efforts to conserve the wood using accelerator mass spectrometry. The more advanced technology yielded a remarkably earlier origin. Roughly 11,600 years ago, a time when Eurasia was still transitioning out of the last ice age, according to educated estimates anyway. This statue is almost twice as old as the Egyptian pyramids and Stonehenge, as well as, by many millenniums, the first known work of ritual art. A new study further skews our understanding of prehistory by pushing back the original date of the Shiger idol by another 900 years, placing it in the context of the early art in Eurasia. The idol was carved during an era of great climate change, when early forests were spreading across a warmer late glacial to post-glacial Eurasia. The landscape changed and the art, figurative designs and naturalistic animals painted in caves and carved in rocks did too perhaps as a way to help people come to grips with the challenging environments they were now encountering on Earth, documenting plasma field events. The Shiger Idol, named for the bog near Kirovgrad in which it was found, is presumed to have rested on a rock base for perhaps two to three decades before toppling into a long gone Paleo Lake, where the peat's antimicrobial properties protected it like a time capsule. 
In the mid 19th century, gold was discovered beneath the mire, and the landowner Count Alexei Stenbock Fermo, and he hired labourers to mine the open site for ore, instructing them to save any objects they may unearth. And sure enough, 13 feet down the idol was discovered and retrieved in 10 fragments. The pieces were carted 60 miles to Yekaterinburg, the city where, 28 years later, the last Tsar of the Russian Empire and his entire family were executed in cold blood. Dr. Terberger and his colleagues have now settled this question in their new study. They now know that the timber was at least 159 years old when the ancient carpenters began to shape it, demonstrating conclusively that the larch was a literal tree of knowledge. Given the speed with which larch logs rot and warp, the researchers determined that the idol was fashioned from a tree that had been just cut, and from the widths and depths of the markings the researchers deducted that the cuts were made by at least three sharp chisels. Some features of the idol clearly resembling Gobekli Tepe, you must consider the global cultural question. Were these people overwhelmingly influenced by cosmic events to such a degree that they seem connected globally 